and thank you for joining us today. I'm just going to give it uh, about a minute and a half, two minutes still. We've got some people signed in uh, who I think are still uh, trying to get connected to the audio connection. Details are on the screen. Um, we'll get started very shortly though and we'll run through this, what will be a, a fairly brief 15-minute uh, uh, run through of this topic for this webinar. Thank you. Okay, so I think we're ready to get started then. So um, thank you very much for joining us today on this uh, episode of, of the webinar sessions that we have on at the moment. Uh, this series is all about the Rapid Author Parts Catalog functionality, otherwise known as Cortona 3D Parts Catalog functionality. Um, future series that we're going to have are, as we see here in the future webinars, some of the topics we're going to try and cover in, in the coming year. Um, if there are any questions at all on anything that you see today or any other topics that I could help with, please just drop me an email to the details at the bottom of the screen here. Um, this is being recorded as well, so you can refer back to this on our YouTube channel. Um, it'll either be later on today or maybe early next week. We'll get that up there so you can refer to it. Um, we already have the recording of the first webinar episode, which was an introduction to this section of the Cortona 3D Rapid Author Toolset. So this will give you some idea of the types of output that we can generate. Today we're focusing, as the second episode, on the authoring and publishing process. Again, these are always meant to be a very short introduction. We're going straight into the tool here. We're not going to bore you with a lengthy slide deck. We're just going to go in and show you the tool uh, as quickly as possible, basically. So we'll do the authoring and publishing basic process today, a couple of different ways of doing that, depending on your CAD source. Uh, and then the next episode is going to be on content distribution portal. How do you actually get that content to your end user? And then the final episode will be what happens when there's an engineering data change? How do we process that as, a, as an author, as a user, as an administrator? Okay, so the topic for today is on creating content. Again, I'm going to dive into the demonstration very swiftly, but I just wanted to introduce the overall workflow here and give you an idea for what you're going to see uh, so that you know exactly what's going on throughout the course of this, this presentation. So the first part that I'm going to show you is just using some CAD data that already has metadata on it. So when that CAD data has been created, it's had part numbers put against it, it has, it's had descriptions put against it as well. So what I'm going to do is we're going to create a Cortona project, we're going to import that CAD data, then we're going to create a project around that. So we're going to create a parts catalogue based upon that data. That data would typically be a subsystem or a subsection, subassembly of your major system. And then we're going to do the publishing process and get that content out of there as well in the formats that, that we'll cover. Okay, so the first section of this then is let's create a project and let's get that CAD data in there. Let's see what happens when we bring CAD data in. Because really what we want to be doing is mapping in your attributes, reusing that data uh, for maximum reuse and maximum efficiency in your processes. So here is the Rapid Catalog interface. It's part of the Cortona 3D Rapid Author Toolset. Rapid Catalog is used when you want to create um, anything to do with parts catalogs or when you want to create anything that's got disassembly views in it, basically. So I'm going to create this project just called Webinar. This is an empty project just now. You can see the parts list table at the bottom there, but nothing in it just now and no item tree. Let's go ahead and import the data then. So we just go to import. I'm going to click the import button and then I'm going to select. In this case, it's JT data. I'm going to select and click open. And this is now running through the import process. It's mapping in uh, part numbers and descriptions from that CAD data. And this is JT data in this case, but it could be any CAD format, really. We just need to create a mapping uh, mapping configuration to get your data in, in the correct format. 
And in this case, it's created a number of items, 72 items in the item tree, and we've got 44 DPL rows being added. So let's see what that looks like. Let's close the import tool here. And now you can see in the item tree, we have the parts appearing. If I switch the viewer on as well, let's bring the quality up to the top level. Um, and now you can see the 3D visualization of this information as well. Um, we can interact with this, it highlights in the item tree. And also at the bottom, we see that the parts list table has been created from the metadata. And if I click on these, you can see all three interfaces, all three sections of the interface are linked together. Okay, so that's the basic import process. Now, if you had different CAD formats that you wanted to import for different projects, we would create different mapping rules for that as well. So that's the first um, first part of our process then. So let's let's roll on to the next part. Um, let's go back to the slide deck. So we've done the import. Now we're going to move to actually creating the content. So we're going to want to generate some views of this product. We're going to want to create some 2D illustrations and author the text. You could bring in some assets if they already exist. So if you already had um, if you already had disassembly views and things in 2D, you could bring them in. But typically in Cortona, we're looking to produce all of this off the back of the CAD data because then everything is nice and linear. Everything updates correctly. So let's go ahead and create some exploded views, do some illustrations, and edit this parts list table a bit and show you kind of a bit of a flavor. Again, this is just a quick introduction, but a bit of a flavor of how this tool really works. And really, the, the best way to show you the true power of this system is if I just create my first sheet called Assembled and just switch on the DPL rows. And if we pretend, OK, I'm done. That's everything that I need to do. Let's see what we've got so far. Literally, all I've done is imported the CAD data and clicked a couple of buttons. So let's go to the preview option now and see what we've managed to generate just with those simple operations. This is loading up in an HTML5 format in my browser. So this is what the end user could see. So it's an interactive version of the CAD data. I can roll, I can zoom in and out. And when I click on items, it identifies what they are in the parts list table. That's all being done with just those few button clicks. But I can go further than that as a user. I can uh, make transparent, I can hide components here as well, and I can dive into the structure a little bit further. Now, if you wanted to protect this data, you can do that, and we'll come back to that. For example, I'm going to protect this uh, faceplate here so that this is a kit of parts. I don't want people to be able to break this apart and see that there's four springs in there that are tightly packed together. I just want that as one unit. And OK, we'll go ahead and do that. But actually, for what we've done so far, I think it's pretty good that we've managed to get this parts catalog straight out with that little work. So let's go back here, then let's actually start building this up a bit more realistically. Um, so let's create a, a viewpoint for that first sheet. I'm going to now clone that page, and I'm going to create a page that's called Casing. And this is going to be a view of the casing, the connections for the upper and lower points here as well. So I'm going to go through and select um, the components that I want to kind of do an explosion of here. Again, this is just a, a very quick introduction for you again. There's a, there's a lot of power that we're not going to be able to show you today. Um, so I'm going to delete the parts that I don't need in this case. We'll hide those DPL row items because we don't want them to appear on this page. Um, I'm then going to do an explosion of this bottom section. And I'm, I'm not going to bore you with the details of what all these options do. We're just kind of, kind of going to go through this in really the speed that I would expect an author to be able to do this, um, accepting that I'm, I'm sort of describing things as we go already. Um, so let's again upper connection now. I want to select the direction, the magnitude, and we'll click Next. That looks pretty good to me. So we're going to click Finish on that. So that's my second view done. Um, so let's save the viewpoint on that now. So those are my two views done, as I'm, I'm quite happy with them just now. We also said in the assembled view that I was going to make a kit out of these parts. Let's go ahead and do that. So, so these parts here are part of this faceplate assembly. If I find that in the DPL table, we can see that this is item 20. If I click on this gray sphere here, we get it as item 20. And what I can do is I can select all of the child items to that assembly. So that's all of these parts, and I can make them inactive on that page. So now we've done that. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to change this description a little bit. So I'm going to edit this and actually go for, rather than ASCII, I'm going to put assemble. Uh, sorry, it should be assembly. 
uh, faceplate assembly. I could also change the part number, the quantity, and put it an ex extra information in here if I wanted to. Um, so those are the 3D views done. Of course, that's okay for the interactive output, but I might also want to create 2D flat output, for which I'll need 2D illustrations. So for the assembled view, what I'm going to do, if my WebEx will hide itself, um, is I'm going to just capture from the 3D scene, create a render from that, because um, that's a nice, simple process for me to do. I can get some high-quality rendering from that. Um, and I could, of course, go to my 2D preview panel here and create a wireframe, and I could put callouts on that as well. In fact, let's do that for the casing page. So the casing page here, we're going to set it to the main viewpoint. We're going to generate callouts. They're automatically created from the parts list table, and they can be configured a multitude of ways depending upon your requirements. So that is going to be casing. Um, I can, if I need, go and use the inbuilt 2D editor as well. Unfortunately, I don't have time to cover this in great detail, but the inbuilt 2D editor will allow me to do a lot of modification to this scene, uh, basically replacing a lot of the functionality that the likes of Adobe Illustrator will allow you to, to do. Uh, once we're happy with that, we can save it. And let's, uh, let's just return to uh, Rapid Catalog there. So once we're happy with all of that, that can be saved. And that's effectively my work completed from the perspective of the authoring process. I'll just preview that again quickly. This is sort of viewing the HTML5 output as it will be. So we've got our main view here. Again, we can click the components here, but if I click this faceplate, you can see that, that is just one lump now. I can't get into that. I can't figure out how it's made. And the casing view here, if I click on that, then we get the disassembly, and it's a simplified view of the parts list table. So it's really quick to build this kind of thing up. I think that's the, that's the point I'm getting across here. We've also got the 2D assets here as well, so I can view them here as well. Okay, so really, really quick to build this stuff up. Um, so that's effectively the authoring process done. Then let's nip back to the slide deck here. I want to rattle through this nice and quick because there's another example, a slightly more complex example to this that I want to show you as well. The final part of the process, though, is publishing because up till now, I'm just creating assets and I'm just linking them together. I'm building up a project rather than an authored output. It's now that I decide what format I want to publish in, whether it's HTML, as you've seen already, whether it's PDF, iOS, whatever. This is governed by the style sheets that are programmed into the software. And all I'm showing you today is the out-of-the-box style sheets. But all of our customers get a custom style sheet for their requirements, with their branding on it, with their requirements in it. Um, and this simply works. I've shown you the preview button. That is effectively a temporary publishing process. I can also publish, and that will give me the final uh, HTML5 uh, output. So let's just publish this to my default published folder. And we'll click OK on that. I'm not going to load it again because you've already seen it. But what I am going to do is show you the files that you will expect to see out of the back of this. So you'll get an HTM, uh, HTML page here that's got your, inf your core information. This is what the user would load from a website. Um, and then you've got all the supporting assets, the images, the 3D scenes, the resources folder, that kind of thing. Okay, so all of that information sits in there, and that can just be loaded into a portal, as we'll show in the next episode, and presented to your end users. We can also publish this to PDF, of course. Um, so let's show you what that looks like. Again, out of the box star sheets here, we haven't customized this, so this is going to be fairly plain looking. But if we just drag this across so you can see it, it is a very familiar looking type of parts catalogue where we've got the illustrations on a page each with their title underneath, the call outs on them, and then the parts list table there along with it. So we're creating both types of documentation at the same time. It's a very efficient way of working. Okay, so I'm conscious of time here. I said that we'd stick to 15 minutes, so I'm going to overrun by a couple of minutes here. That's Unfortunately, that's not, not unusual when you're trying to cover a, a piece of software as, as powerful as Cortona. And really, I am just scratching the surface here on capability. But the next thing I want to show you is that, of course, that's fine when you're dealing with CAD data that's got all of your part numbers and your descriptions in there. But what happens if it doesn't quite have all of that in there? What happens if you store your descriptions in a separate system, maybe in an Excel document or something like that? Well, we follow the same basic process for your authoring. The only difference is that we would want to import your part information 
and it would usually be at a couple of different points or at either of these two points rather we would normally either bring it in at the same time as your CAD data and merge those two data sets together or we would bring it in at some point along the authoring process and again merge it together I say merge if we're going to automatically link the the imported part information to the CAD geometry it needs to have some key there some kind of Rosetta stone that will allow it to look up and associate if it doesn't then you'll have to do that manually in Cortona it's again it's very it's a, it's a drop and click process basically in Cortona even if it's manual but what I wanted to show you just now is how we do this importing of Excel data and I'm going to take this later example from when we have a project that we've already created and then we want to bring in some updated um, part information. So for this, I'm going to load up a slightly more complex piece of information here, which is a compressor assembly. Um, so this is um, this is the assembly here. I'm just going to click through it on the screen here so you can see how this breaks down. So we've got the major assembly level, the top level here. Then we've got the disassembly of the drive belts. And here's the accumulator here as well. <clears throat> and you can see at the bottom of the screen here that there are no descriptions and part numbers. And if I publish this out, we'll get interactivity. It will link to the lines here, but it's not going to give the user anything that they can go, then go to an ordering system and order the parts. It's still missing that critical information. But what I do know from this CAD data is that behind the scenes, there is a unique identifier against those parts. And I do also have an Excel document that has those unique identifiers. So what I can do is I can import part information against that and I can automatically associate it. It means that I don't have to rework this project. It doesn't matter that I've authored it without that information now because I can import that over the top of it. So let me show you that process now. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Import Data, and in this case it's formatted in an Excel format. Uh, and I'm going to go for the compressor parts uh, list here that I've got and click open. And that says now import it 707 DPL row items. And when I close this, you'll see that the DPL will refresh and we will have the part information associated with that. And now if I preview that out, we will see that that information is now associated there with the correct parts. And of course, this process, as with your CAD mapping, depends upon your data. And part of our normal uh, deployment process would be to consult with you, figure out what data you've got in place, whether there's any merging of data required, what your specific requirements are, because everyone's different. Everyone's storing their data in a slightly different way and require a, a bespoke solution, essentially. And here we have all the parts associated there. All the exploded views are still intact as well. OK, so that's that's what I wanted to show you on that side of things. I also wanted to show you as well, I thought the last thing to show you would be what about if you want to change your style sheet? Because this is pretty boring and plain looking. Or if I want my company logo on it, do I then need to start from scratch? Well, no, you don't. You can just open your project in a, in a different style sheet, basically. And that's precisely what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go to Open Project. I want to select that compressor project that I've been working on. And I'm going to say open as, and here's a star sheet that I created earlier. There are going to be some warnings come up on the screen, but don't worry about them. They're just warnings to say that data's changing to do with the style sheets and to do with the formatting. I'm okay with that just now. And what that does now, if we publish that out, and I'll bring that session across just now, is we end up with a framework here that has the exact same data in it. It's reused all of that information. But now you can see my branding on it. You can see that I've been able to put uh, uh, project information on here. But more than that, we've also got a basket functionality, a basic basket functionality available here. So if I select any of these parts here and I go to add to basket, or add to quote rather in this case, that is now building up. In this case, it's a request for quote system. And this can be used to send in an order request into like a central point for, the, for that order to then be placed. This could, of course, be a fully uh, fully deployed e-commerce system. It could be a basket system. It can be the request for quote. You can do whatever you want, basically. The critical thing here is it's all controlled by the style sheet. It's all done 
off the back of that same project data that we started with, the same basic project data in here. Okay, so that's a little bit of a kind of whistle stop tour of the functionality of importing and authoring projects. And I think this demonstrates as well that that authoring process is a really slick way of working. Um, it's, it'd be great to show you with your own data as well, if, it, if this is something you'd like a demo of with your own data and please again get in contact with us. I'm going to put the email address back up on the screen in a minute. Please get in contact with us and I'll be happy to work through with you and maybe get an example together showing you with your data what this would look like. Um, that's something that we do sort of day in and day out anyway, helping people understand what the true ROI for your business will be of this. Exactly. When you published out that interactive content or that PDF, how are you going to get it to your end user? If it's the pump assembly within a vehicle, how are you going to make sure that that technician accesses the right vehicle at the right time, make sure they get the correct version for their vehicle? All of these questions crop up and those are dealt with with a good parts portal. So we'll be doing that on the 17th of January. We'll send the invites out for that. Um, and again, all of these episodes, two we've done so far, two to come, um, they're all going to be available on our YouTube channel for future reference as well. So any questions to info at cadituk.com. I'll try and roll some of them into the final episode as well. Um, but otherwise, please just let me know. We'll do what we can to help. Perfect. Thank you very much for your help, uh, for your time today then. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next episode. Thanks very much. Bye for now.